In this lesson you will learn the concepts that you can use to differentiate the epicenter of an earthquake from its focus, intensity of an earthquake from its magnitude, and active from inactive faults. One of the most frightening phenomena is the earthquake. Sadly, the Philippines is always hit by these tremendous earthquakes that causes great damage to the environment, infrastructures and also results to loss of people. No one can stop earthquake from happening. But there are things that people can do to avoid or reduce loss of life and damage to properties. The first step is to have a clear understanding of the occurrence of earthquakes. Where does an earthquake start? The breaking of the rocks will start at the point where rocks are weakest. This spot where the first break occurs is called focus or hypo center. The focus is the origin or the center of the earthquake and it is located beneath or underground. A point on the surface of the earthquake which is directly above the focus of an earthquake. And where the earthquake vibration reach first is called epicenter. How strong is the earthquake? An earthquake may be described in two ways, intensity and magnitude. The intensity of an earthquake give us an idea of how strong and weak the shaken is. Or simply by describing the effects of an earthquake on people or surroundings. Another way of describing the strength of an earthquake is by magnitude. The Richter scale also called Richter magnitude scale. It is a measure of the energy released. The greater the magnitude, the stronger the earthquake. To further understand the intensity and magnitude, let's watch a video. Magnitude and intensity are both related to the size of an earthquake, but they each measure different aspects. Magnitude, which measures the energy released at the source of the earthquake rupture and is calculated using measurements from seismic instruments, is one single value. Seismic intensity, which is the measurement of the strength of shaking at a specific location, determined from effects on people, human structures, and the natural environment, produces a range of shaking intensities in different locations. Thus, unlike earthquake magnitude, which is the same for all locations, the seismic intensity you feel depends on where you are. Intensity is mostly controlled by three factors. Magnitude, how big the earthquake was, distance from the hypocenter, intensity varies from place to place, and the local rock and soil conditions. Let's compare magnitude and intensity by using a light bulb as an analogy. The light bulb represents the location within the Earth called the hypocenter, where the earthquake begins. The magnitude or size of an earthquake is like the wattage of a light bulb. Just as the wattage represents the amount of power of the light bulb, the magnitude is related to the total amount of energy released by the earthquake source. The intensity, or shaking level, is like the amount of light from a light bulb at any spot in a room. A small light bulb in one area of a room will make that area bright with high intensity light, but it will leave the distant areas of the room dim with low intensity light. So, a given earthquake has only one magnitude, but will produce different intensities of ground shaking as shown on the USGS Did You Feel It intensity maps. To sum it up, magnitude, it is the energy released by an earthquake at the focus. It is calculated from earthquakes reported by an instrument seismograph. Why? Intensity, it is the strength of an earthquake perceived and felt in a certain locality. Intensity is generally high near the epicenter. Let's do learning task number one. Read the article about earthquake that happened in Lausanne last 1990. And answer the question briefly. 1990 earthquake wreaked havoc in the Philippines. More than 1,000 people are killed when 7.7 .7 magnitude earthquake strikes Luzon Island in the Philippines on this day in 1990. The massive tremor wreaked havoc across a sizable portion of Luzon, the country's largest island, with Baguio City suffering the most devastating effects. The epicenter of the quake, which struck at 4.26 p.m., was north of Manila in the Nueva Ecija province. Reports indicated that the shaking went on for nearly a full minute. Collapsing building were the main cause of damage and death. 
Getting out of a multi-story building was a good safety precaution that afternoon, although many people were injured and a few even died in stampedes of others doing the same thing. At Christian College, a six-story building completely collapsed trapping approximately 250 students and teachers inside. Heroic rescue efforts saved many, but some victims who did not die in the collapse were found dead later from dehydration. Because they were not pulled out in time. All types of building, including several resort hotels in Baguio, known as the Philippine summer capital, suffered tremendous damage. Most of the city's 100,000 residents slept outdoors that evening and during the following week, afraid to return to their homes amid the frequent aftershocks. For days, workers pulled bodies from demolished building in Baguio. The best estimate is that 1,000 bodies were eventually recovered. At least another 1,000 people suffered serious injuries. Rescue efforts were hampered severely because the three main roads into the city were blocked by a landslide. Hundreds of motorists were stranded on the roads as well. Outside Baguio, a chemical factory fire also caused terrible damage. The Tuba Gold and Copper Mine in the area lost 30 workers when a mine collapsed. Baguio sitting on at least seven fault line, is now listed as one of the risk-prone cities in Asia. In likelihood of deadly landslide, American military personnel stationed in the Philippine archipelago took part in the relief effort. The area was revisited by disaster less than a year later when Mount Pinatubo erupted. Some geologists believe the two events were connected. Let's answer the guide question. Number 1. Where is the epicenter of the earthquake? Answer. North of Manila in Nueva Ecija. Number 2. How many individuals are affected by the earthquake? Answer. More than 1,000 people. Number 3. Discuss how devastating a 7.7 magnitude is. Answer. 7.7 magnitude earthquake has devastating effect wherein a lot of buildings were collapsed and large number of individuals were easily gone. Number 4. When an earthquake occurs, where would shaken be greater? Near or away from the epicenter? Answer near the epicenter. Number 5. Where would damage be more? Near or away from the epicenter? Answer. Near the epicenter. Number 6. Where would the intensity be higher? Near or away from the epicenter? Answer near the epicenter. Learning task number 2. Match the Richter magnitude indicated in column A with earthquake effect found in column B. Where do earthquake occurs? A fault line is defined as a geological fracture wherein the movement of masses of rocks has displaced part of the Earth's crust. A rapid movement of a fault line may produce a powerful energy that can trigger a strong earthquake. An active fault is a fault that is likely to have another earthquake sometime in the future. Faults are commonly considered to be active if there has been movement observed or evidence of seismic activity during the last 10,000 years. Active faulting is considered to be a geologic hazard and related to earthquake as a cause. Fault classification. Active faults are structure along which we expect displacement to occur. The process that produces displacement across a fault continuously. All shallow earthquakes occur on active faults. Inactive faults are structures that we can identify but which do not have earthquake. If a fault has been inactive for a million years, it's certainly safe to call it inactive. Learning Task 3. Read the question carefully. Choose the letter of the correct answer. Number 1. What point along the fault where movement first occur? A. Epicenter B. Focus C. Intensity D. Magnitude. Answer. B. Focus. Number 2. What point on the Earth's surface is directly above the focus? A. Epicenter B. Fault C. Intensity D. Magnitude. Answer. A. Epicenter. Number 3. Which agency of the government in the Philippines is monitoring the movement of the Earth's crust? A. DENRBDOSTC. Pagasa D. Fibox. Answer. Fibox. Number 4. It is sudden movement of the Earth's crust caused by the release of stress accumulated along geologic faults or by volcanic activity. 
A. Earthquake B. Flag C. Typhoon B. Tsunami Answer. Earthquake Here are some precautionary measures to be observed before, during, and after the earthquake. Remember to always stay calm. That ends our lesson for today. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to this channel for more videos.